Grace God. Thank you. And you say you said devaluation stage. Can you describe yeah. that or tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. So basically the stage of narcissistic abuse. When you're dealing with a narcissist, there's three stages. So you have the the idealization stage, which is, you know, where they groom you, they love bomb you. So they're showing you all this love and kindness and care and attention. It's just, it's overwhelming in a sense. Sometimes it can be addicting for some of us that may have not got that type of love and attention when we grew up, you know, from our parents. And so we can fall in love with that. I think that's kind of it, that kind of got me just a little bit, you know, but, um, and that can happen for victims and survivors too. But anyway, so you have that phase and that phase can last for as long as days, months, years. It really just depends on the individual target, right? And then you have the devaluation stage. And this is when the narcissist, cause they put you on that pedestal, right? It's like, you can do no wrong, but then they take you off that pedestal. So they start to nitpick you. They start to criticize you. They start to abuse you. They start to accuse you of doing things that you're not doing and arguing and fussing and fighting with you, right? So they're taking you off of that pedestal and then now they're devaluing you, treating you like dis disposable garbage, right? Then towards the end, this is the, uh, the discard phase where they discard you they may ghost you, they may stonewall you, so they may leave the door open, meaning like they may not give you a closure text or they may say they're sorry or they may not apologize or they may not just give you that, you know, something that you need in order for you to like to let the situation go. They don't give it to you, you know, because they know that you're going to be thinking about them, you know, and you, you need that closure and they don't give that to you on purpose. So it's all conscious activity uh, with the narcissist. Yes. And are there other pe people with other sorts of disorders that can be mistaken from a narcissist that may have similar behaviors? Um, that's a good question. So as I mentioned before, there's the borderline personality disorder. Um, you know, they have the, the psychopaths. Um, what else? They have many other ones. Like they have a, a antisocial personality disorder, you know, and um, I believe, I think there's another one called the his, the histronic uh, personality disorder as well. And what else? The sociopaths. How do we relate this to hip hop? I mean, does, does it? Well, yeah, so, I was gonna say like a lot of that stuff sounds like Oh man, like a lot of rappers have this then, right? That's like you go yeah, to I mean, battle, it's... you gotta be like, you know, if you go into a battle in some cases, it's like, oh, I don't care. Oh, I'm coming for your juggler. Oh, I'm the best. You're not. Right. You know, yeah. like I was I don't know how I can how I feel about that because I I started thinking about like, you know, that. But I think just in general, like with hip hop artists, they not all, but I feel like some of them have to, I guess, quote unquote, come up or do certain things in order to get like a record deal or to sell music. And sometimes they may try to like be somebody that they're not, or they may have to behave in a way, you know, that may be offensive towards others to get what they want. I don't know, it's just something about the industry, I'm not saying everybody, but it's just, you have to sometimes be like a jerk sometimes, you know? Not and I'm not saying everybody. I'm not saying everybody. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't paint us musicians a bad name. Man. I'm sitting here like, yo, I'm not I'm saying everybody. I've been married 20 years. You know, I think we doing all right. <laughs> I'm waiting for somebody to say something, man. But man, she did say most narcissists don't recognize when they are narcissists. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could be delusional, right? I mean, if you, I think it has something to do if you choose the word villain for your title, that might, <laughs> might be enough. KKK, baby. You know? I said, not everybody is a narcissist. I always talk about this in my videos. It's like, not everybody, but it's just, it's a certain select few. But I will tell you guys this that it's something about the entertainment industry though because i remember years ago this was like back in 2016 i used to drive for lyft and uber 
And like, I met like music artists, um, movies, movie, people that, you know, they're trying to be actors and stuff like that. I don't know, it's just, there's this way, like you have to behave in a certain way. Not everybody, not everybody, trust me. But it's just, it's very obnoxious, it's arrogant. I don't know. It's, it's kind of my Jordan rule, right? Like, you, you have yeah. to have some of that in you to get- You, you got to, but it's like some people, I think they take it to the extreme and some of them recognize it and others of them, like they need people to tell them like, yo, like you need to, not behave that way because you're like hurting these people and then some like i said some will recognize it and then others will be like i don't care like i gotta make this money or i gotta get this record deal or i gotta get on this scene this movie scene or whatever you know so does, does everybody have some of those traits in them like like yeah you know, yeah no, like, I, I think maybe not to those extremes but you know they, some of those sound like I won't speak for anybody else. Like I know someone's like, hmm. Yeah, human character. Whoa, look at that box. Check that one too. <laughs> Should I go take a test? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I got six out of ten. What's that mean? <laughs> I think hip hop automatically gives you a five. Right, right. Yeah, I'm, saying, Shit, I'm at eleven out of ten. I'm, I'm, I'm it's a risk for me. Like, wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait. Like, um, if you have most, like, I would say like five signs, and if the, the common five signs, if you're doing them consistently and persistently, and this is like a lifestyle, then yeah, you, you might be a narcissist. And, and for me, like, I'm not doing this to bash anybody by any means. I'm just telling you guys, like, my story, what I went through, and I don't know, I just hope that it can help somebody that has dealt with one, and like I said, it's, it's so cliche. It's funny because the narcissist and the borderline that I dealt with, they was both into hip hop, both did music. And I think it was just the, maybe who I connected with. Cause I don't think that all music artists are like that. I really don't. No, of course not. No, that's, that's right. No, I, I, I really it? don't believe that at all. All right. So did, did dude at least teach you how to make beats? <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, you know. We find out you got some hot fire over there in the production staff. <laughs> you know, it, it's crazy because you guys remember that show called uh, Making a Band? Yeah. Uh -huh. How can we forget? So, like, that was like one of my favorite TV shows that I used to love to watch. He's cake. And like I said, like, I grew up in the church. You guys know how that is. Like, singing in the choir and just doing choir rehearsal and doing all that stuff. And I don't know, music has just always been a part of my life. And like I said, I just, I felt inclined to reach out to him. And yeah, he, he taught me how to make beats. And I was just like, oh wow, like I never knew I could do that. From this joint, and, you got beats, um, right? You got beats. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, you um, can we His school's yeah. always looking for beats. That's why he's right. here. We, we all oh, yeah. beats. We but you know the beats. crazy part? The crazy part, you guys, is like, since I had that experience, I never went back to music after I had that really? experience with him. So that means there's an NPC for sale somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, so, uh, what kind of food we got over there? <laughs> after talking to you guys, you guys are kind of making me think like maybe I should, you know, later on down the road, I think I might explore music again, like how it's I get, how I did before. It's a wait. therapy. That's actually what got me through part of my my recovery. I mean, it wasn't my yeah. my, my my challenge wasn't all just because of narcissists, but you know, it, right. that was the last straw for me. And making beats was my solace. That's what kind of drew me up out of there, and that was my my place to go inside of my head so I could stop thinking about all the things that were stressing me. So, right. Might be a good therapy for you. And I, mm -hmm. yeah, this, this has been dope, Joy. I, I, do you have? Does anybody? I mean, you guys want to keep going? You guys got some something else we want to talk about on the nar narcissistic abuse side? I know we kind of got into the hip hop stuff. No, nah, it was. I mean, definitely kind of gives you stuff to think about, right? Like I said, I know for me, I'm hearing stuff like, "Hmm, I have that tendency," so I got to be conscious of that. Yeah, I'm over here. Like, am I? Am I? Am I? Under five out of the ten, or am I? <laughs> I, I definitely got the N A R down. I got a game of horse, huh? Yeah, right. Know. That's what I'm saying. I'm playing horse. I'm getting close. <laughs>